When we think of climbing Mount Everest, we often imagine courageous mountaineers risking their lives to conquer the world's highest peak. But what many people don't realize is that without the assistance of the Sherpas, this expedition would not be possible. On the morning of the 18th of April 2014, the Sherpas were working as usual, fixing ropes and ferrying loads, when disaster struck when least expected. Shocking the mountaineering world and deeply scarring the Sherpa community. The Sherpas, an ethnic group of 80,000 in Nepal that moved south from the Tibetan plateau 300 years ago, have been used as labor or mountaineering expeditions since the very beginning. Genetically adapt to high altitudes, Sherpas are stronger, faster and naturally fitter above 23,000 feet, where most western climbers begin using bottled oxygen. The Sherpas are essential to the climbing industry on Everest, performing the dangerous work of setting up ropes and ladders, carrying supplies and providing support to the climbers. However, their contributions are often undervalued. In the past, Sherpas have been subjected to discrimination and unsafe working conditions. On the morning of the disaster, the Sherpas were preparing the route up the mountain for the climbers who would follow in the coming weeks. They were working in the Combo Icefall, a treacherous section of the glacier notorious for its instability and danger. The Combo Icefall is one of the most dangerous parts of the Everest climb, with seracs and massive blocks of ice ready to break free at any moment. The Kumbu Icefall, stretching from 18,000 to 19,000 feet, lies just above base camp on the Nepal side of Mount Everest. Because of its nature, as the Kumbu is a glacier, the ice is constantly shifting, as no bridges, concealing crevices and overhanging ice blocks ranging in size from several tons to thousands of tons, can open or collapse with little warning, generating extreme danger for climbers. Anyone who wants to climb Everest from the south side must pass through the Combo Icefall. Because the icefall is so dangerous, guides try to reduce the number of trips through this gauntlet for paying clients, which increases the number of times a working Sherpa portaging tents, food, ropes, and most importantly, oxygen for the climbers, must pass through this dangerous zone. Crossing the Kumbu is usually done at night via headlamp between 2 a.m. and 5 p.m. This is when ice blocks and the hanging glaciers are most stable and avalanches are least likely. During the day, as the sun warms the mountain, the hanging glaciers begin to avalanche and the ice in the combo starts to crumble. Whereas a paying climber may pass through the combo only six to eight times while climbing Everest, going up and down for acclimatization, a Sherpa can easily make the mortal trek 30 to 40 times in a season, exponentially increasing the risk of being subject to accidents. The Kumbu Icefall is basically like playing Russian roulette. You don't know when disaster is going to strike, and when it does, there is nowhere to hide. It was 6.30 in the morning of the 21st of April 2014, and as usual, the Sherpas were ferrying the loads of the paying clients. They were crossing the area of the Kumbu Glacier called the Popcorn Field, so named for the huge blocks of ice spraying across the snow. They were at an altitude of around 5,800 meters when they started hearing a low rumble. The Sherpas knew the mountain like their pockets and at that moment they knew that it was over. Eyewitnesses reported seeing the 25 men on the Combo Glacier being swept away by an avalanche. However, what looked like an avalanche from far away were instead ice shards exploded from the impact of a block of ice with the ground. The ice avalanche came from a large serac breaking off on the slopes of Mount Everest's western shoulder. 
there was little snow involved and the large blocks of Serac ice behave much more like a rockfall, excluding the chance of being an avalanche. The Serac was estimated to have been 34.5 meters thick and to have had a mass of 14,000 tons and it came crashing down at insane speeds. There was nothing the Sherpas could do to avoid the debris, as the Combo Icefall is notoriously dangerous for its lack of shelters or protection. The 25 men were swept away like leaves by water, unable to resist the sheer power of the mountain. In the chaos and confusion that followed, the Sherpas that were spared work frantically to rescue their fellow climbers and Sherpas digging through the snow and ice with their hands and shovels. But the damage had already been done and as the dust settled it became clear that the toll was staggering. Rescue arrived almost immediately but had to be initially called off due to too much risk. Later coming back to the scene, 13 bodies were recovered and 3 were missing. On that day, 13 Sherpas and 3 climbers lost their lives on the highest mountain in the world. One of the victims was Ang Kaji Sherpa, who was one of the strongest Sherpas on the 2012 North Face National Geographic Everest expedition. Kaji, father of six, was a veteran of over half a dozen expeditions to Everest. In 2012, he was the first person to summit Everest that spring and put up the climbing ropes for all the subsequent climbers. When he came down from that summit bid in 2012, he was greeted with an enormous applause, but humble and smiling, he simply said he wasn't that tired. For the climbers who had been on the mountain that day, the shock and grief were overwhelming. They had lost friends, colleagues and fellow adventurers in a sudden and senseless tragedy. It was a stark reminder of the fragility of life and the power of nature. Some of the climbers at base camp were too shocked to continue and having taken all their belongings they began their descent with death looming all over the mountain. On the 22nd of April the Sherpas announced they would not work on Everest for the rest of 2014 out of respect for the victims and by the 24th of April almost all expeditions had decided to abandon their climbing plans. The 600 mountaineers who were at base camp before the avalanche was down to 40 or 50. The disaster shook the climbing world to its core, but it was also a moment of reflection and contemplation, a chance for climbers to reassess the risks and rewards of their chosen pursuit and for the Sherpas a stark reminder of the dangers they face every day on the mountain. <laughs>